Hi guys. So this week we're getting into um, hair cutting, chapter 16. Um, so now the real fun begins. We actually get to start cutting hair, which is so exciting. Um, I just feel like, you know, in this business when, you know, cutting hair, sort of like you're able to sort of create your vision and, and you know, it's just so good for our our artistic side to be able to do hair cutting. So I saw this funny and um, I used to hang this in my salon because I thought it was pretty funny. Um, it says, I don't know what you usually get for a haircut, but it should be life. As in, you know, it's such a crime that you should get life in prison. I just thought it was funny. It always used to make me laugh. So our learning objectives are to identify the reference points on the head and understand their role in haircutting. Define lines, sections, elevations, and guidelines. List the factors in a successful client consultation. Explain the various tools that we use for haircutting. Um, name the three things you can do to ensure good posture and position while cutting hair. Um, perform the four basic haircuts. And explain a clipper cut and use of a trimmer. We don't actually get into doing men's cuts till, um, till the next, after the break. Um, only because we need our mannequin heads for roller set, finger wave, pin curl, perm wind. Um, so we don't want to shave them off until we're prepared to start cutting with our, our next mannequin head. Um, that being said, if you haven't uh, ordered your next mannequin head, you'll be needing it for the new year. So you just might want to look into getting that done. So why do we need to study hair cutting? Um, hair cutting is the basic founda foundational skill upon which all other hair design is built. So if you look at that from a um, foundation standpoint, um, you know, everything we do starts with a good haircut. If you don't have a good haircut, it's really hard to do anything with style, color, anything to make it look good. So, you know, it really does build, it really is the foundation of any style is a good haircut. Um, being able to rely on your haircutting skills when creating a haircut is what will build confidence, trust, loyalty between stylist and client. If you are a good cutter, um, you will find that your clientele will be so loyal to you because there's nothing better than a great haircut. Um, it's just so important that your skills are, are really, really good and uh, it just makes such a huge difference when with your clients. Uh, the other thing is the ability to duplicate an existing haircut or create a new haircut from a photo. So if you've cut someone's hair and then you don't see them again for another six, eight, ten weeks, depending, um, and you're able to recreate that exact same haircut by following your own lines um, is so important. And, and I mean, if somebody gets a really good haircut, all they want is to have that redone again. So it's really awesome to be able to be able to pick up your haircut and understand exactly what you did the last time and, you know, basically just look at it from a, a length point of view. Um, again, this is why your client intake card is also really important so that anything that you did um, that you think is worthy of, you know, taking note of, um, write it on the card, how much you took off, how you dealt with the weight, anything like that is really important. Studying the fundamentals will allow you to understand advanced cutting techniques. Um, so we are, like I said, we are learning the basics and the foundation in this class. Um, you get into advanced cutting next year. Um, you get into, you know, thinning and all that kind of stuff. In this class, we basically, all we do is learn the, the, the basic way to cut hair. Um, specializing in hair cutting will increase your career opportunities. If cutting is something that you really do end up enjoying, um, you know, to be to be uh, just doing hair cutting, doing platform work, things like that, there's a whole array of things that are available to you if you become sort of more of a specialized in hair cutting. 
Um, hair cutting is an exciting art form. I truly believe that cutting hair is like creating a sculpture or a painting. You know, you're creating a piece of art. You're just doing it with a different medium. Um, as a stylist, you're given the opportunity to shape, design, cut the hair into endless designs. Foundational skills start with being educated in the principles of hair cutting and precision hair cutting methods. So precision hair cutting is about the application of a systemic plan when cutting hair. So we will go over all of that um, in our practical portion about how you're going to design that haircut and how you're going to actually visualize it before you begin. Um, it's really important to sort of be able to see how it's going to come out at the end before you start because you sort of work backwards and start your plan based on what your end result is going to be. When it's combined with the principles of haircutting, you will have a better understanding of how to approach any haircut. However, first you must know the rules before you break them. You'll need to understand the techniques and tools of cutting. So that being said, I know that um, a lot of you who are working in salons now, um, the way that I teach how to cut hair is probably very different than um, a lot of you are used to and with the people that you work with, and that's fine. All I'm saying is in this class, we teach you the basics so that you are able to use that as a foundation to create your own way, your own style when you move on. Um, we do things in a very specific way because it teaches you how to subsection, how to section, how to hold your comb, how to hold your scissors. It all comes down to that. So the way that I do things, may not be the way that you're used to, but it's definitely um, an important way to learn to be able to build, build up from that. Understanding the basic principles of haircutting. So good haircuts begin with an understanding of the shape of the head, obviously, um, the head form. So we went into that a little bit last week with the um, principles of hair design figuring out face shape and how to um, create styles, color, all of that stuff to either emphasize um, things that they like or or take away from or de-emphasize things that are maybe a problem. Um, so it's important to understand anything from, um, you know, cowlicks to crowns to all of that stuff makes a huge difference when you're trying to design a haircut. So the reference points, mark where the surface of the head changes, such as the ears, jawline, occipital bone, or apex. These are the points that we use to establish design lines. An understanding of the head shape and reference points will help you in the following ways. Finding balance um, so that both sides can turn out the same. Developing the ability to create the hair, same haircut consistently. Um, when you understand the reference points and how to include them into your cutting so that every time they come back, you're like, well, I know that at the occipital bone, I left more weight or I took it away or, you know, those kinds of things are really important. Showing where and when it is necessary to change a technique to make up for irregularities, such as a flat crown, which is something that I have. I have kind of like what we would call like an egg shape. So my head sort of comes up to a point and then I have like a little flat spot back here. So I have to be very mindful of that when I'm doing my hair so that I don't end up with like that flat spot back there, which I'm sure I do by the end of the day with my baby bird hair. What are the standard reference points on the head? We've gone over this um, already in the very beginning when we started talking about um, when we were doing sectioning, but um, it's something that needs to be sort of in your memory lock that you know, we don't, you don't even have to think twice when you're, when you're looking at a creation of the hair, hair style, anything like that, that you know exactly where all the reference points are. It's really important to have those sort of in there, kind of on memory lock. So the parietal ridge, the widest area of the head, which is right here, starting at the temples, ending at the bottom of the crown, where the head curves at the back. The occipital bone, the bone that protrudes at the base of the skull, which is back here. Found by feeling the skull, placing a comb flat against the nape. Um, the eight apex, obviously the highest point of the head where we set the comb and wherever the comb is touching, um, that's the apex. 
in the four corners. So these signal a change in the shape of the head form from flat to round and vice versa. So your four corners are basically, you know, front here and back here. What are the areas of the head? So here's kind of a really good um, picture of the anatomy. So obviously the top, the parietal ridge, the crown, the side, the occipital bone, the nape, and then the temple. So these are all really important um, reference points when trying to figure out where you want to, how you want to create your style, where you want to create weight, take weight away from. Um, it's really important to make sure that you know exactly where all these places are. What are the areas of the head? So the top, by locating the parietal ridge, you can find that the hair grows uh, on the top of the head. This hair lies on the head shape. Hair that grows below the parietal ridge hangs because of gravity. So if you think about it, the parietal ridge is here. So any hair that grows above it lays on the head. Any hair that grows from here down actually hangs because of gravity. That's how you kind of understand where the parietal ridge is. It's where the head changes shape. Um, the front from the apex to the back of the ear. So basically this forward section. Um, everything that falls in front of the ear um, is considered the front. The sides includes all hair from the back of the ear forward below the parietal ridge. So back of the ear, parietal ridge, this whole section here is considered the side. The crown is the area between the apex and the back of the parietal ridge. So the crown, the apex is here, crown is here, parietal ridge ends here. Uh, the nape, the area at the back part of the neck, and consists of all the hair below the occipital bone. Uh, the back, from the apex to the back of the ear, it's the hair that falls naturally behind the ear. So it would be in this section here. And the bang or fringe area, obviously, is the triangular section that begins at the apex and comes up to the front four corners. So it's basically this triangle here. Lines, sections, and angles. So it's really important to understand the difference um, between a line, a section, and an angle, and how they're incorporated to create a style. So the line is a thin continuous mark used as a guide. There are three types of straight lines in cutting hair, horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. So when we think of a horizontal line, it's parallel to the horizon. Um, it builds weight and directs eye from, the side, from side to side. It, it makes your eye go this way. Vertical is described as up and down. It runs perpendicular to the horizon this way, so it removes weight and creates the layers. And diagonal is between horizontal and vertical. They have a slanting or sloping direction. You can have um, diagonal forward, which would be this way, and then diagonal back, which is this way. Um, and it basically it creates the movement around the face depending on what you're doing. Sections. So we understand what the sections of the head are um, when it comes to um, you know, your four quadrants, right? You can, you, you do a, um, the section from front to back, which is your profile section, your section from ear to ear, which is your radial section, you know, your nape section. So that's considered the working area of the hair. So when you separate the hair, those are called your sections. Um, it's to keep your hair controlled. It's to keep your hair in a, um, neat and tidy so that you don't get lost, so you're, it's very easy to run through. And then your sections, your main sections, are divided into smaller areas, which are called your subsections. So those are the areas that we cut. Um, so if you have, say, you know, you have your front section here, and you bring this first piece of hair up, that's considered your subsection, and that's the part you're going to cut. Your horseshoe section is taken from the recession to recession, separates the head at the parietal ridge below the the crown allowing you to have control when layering or graduating the hair. A pivoting section is pie shaped, rotates from a central point and is used in layering or graduation. Your profile section divides the head down the center um, from the forehead to the nape. Your radial section is from ear to ear, divides the hair from front to back. And an angle is created when the space between the two lines or surfaces intersect at a certain point. So the angle in which you cut that line is what gives the hair the direction. So if you're cutting it on a 45 degree angle or a 90 degree angle, all these things come into play um, 
it's funny. You know, in high school, I never thought, God, why am I ever going to need geometry ever again in my life? Guess what? Everything we do in this class when it comes to haircutting, everything comes down to um, an angle. So understanding the, the geometry side of it is, is important. So here's some good visuals. Um, on the left is the sections. Obviously, the same as what we've done in the past. So your horseshoe section is at the bottom. And then in the top right, that's actually a really good um, visual of what a subsection is. So taking a full section and taking that one piece out and using that to cut, that's considered your subsection. Elevation. So elevation or lifting is um, the degree at which the subsection that you are of the hair is held or elevated away from the head when you're cut. So um, zero elevation being like it hangs straight down, um, coming out from the head would be like a, a 45 or a 90 straight up. Um, it's anything basically beyond zero degrees. So it's really important to understand when we talk about elevation, what, what level of elevation we're going to be. And when we go through the haircuts, you know, I explain all that. And then graduation. So graduation elevation creates graduation layers, and it usually is described in degrees. The more you lift the hair, the more graduation or layering that you create. So in our graduation haircut, we cut everything at a 45 degree angle. So this gives us that, you know, that nice graduated look from back to front. And then obviously shrinkage is when the hair contracts or lifts during styling. Anyone that's cut or dealt with curly hair understands that you pull that hair straight and you cut it, it immediately springs back up. So it's really important to understand how much that hair is going to shrink as you're cutting it so that you're not cutting off too much that when it actually dries and shrinks up, you've lost, you know, twice as much length as what you had originally thought. The cutting line. So it is the angle at which the fingers are held while cutting the line that creates the end shape. Also known as the cutting position, cutting angle, finger angle, finger position. The cutting line can be described as horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or in degrees in relation to the angle, angle of the head. Um, again, once we actually start cutting, I can I show you how um, to hold your hands per depending on how we're going to work, and that's considered your cutting line. Guideline or your guide um, is the subsection of hair that determines that the length the length that the hair will be cut. So this is the most important piece of hair that you will cut on that head. Um, it's basically the first thing that you do to to begin. It figures out the length that it will be, the length of the layers, the direction it's going to go. All of that thing is created from your guideline. It's 100% the most important piece of hair that you cut. Um, it's located at the perimeter, the outer line, or interior, or inside line, depending on what we're doing. And it is the very first section of hair that you cut. Uh, there's two different kinds of guidelines. There's a stationary guide, which does not move, which means everything is brought to, to, that, um, to that guide or to that subsection. So you subsection, bring it down, cut your guideline and then everything else comes down to meet it as a blunt cut in your blunt cut your guideline is stationary traveling guide or movable guide moves with the haircut as it progresses so as you move around the hair like down the back the the actual guideline moves with you so it's really um, important that you understand the difference between a guideline that is stationary or does not move and a traveling guideline one that moves with you over direction. So over direction occurs when you comb the hair the opposite way of its natural falling position. So as an example, the hair on the side of your head, it grows and falls down. So if we were to pick that hair up and bring it up 90 degrees over the top of the head, we are over directing it, which means we are putting it in the opposite direction, the way that it's supposed to go. Um, basically over direction is if you want to create length, in a design or if you're um, you know wanting to create some layers that's where we sort of over direct to keep length so here's some good visuals uh, top left corner is um, the head shape 
So showing the zero degrees at the bottom, which would be like a one length blunt, blunt cut, 45, 90, 135, 180, or 90 degrees off the top of the head. So these are um, the numbers that we use a lot when we're talking about hair cutting. So it's really important that you understand how it works. When we say zero degree elevation, zero degree elevation always means one length straight down. Um, so it's really important to understand that. The middle picture uh, shows a really good example of elevation where he's actually lifting the hair off the head in a subsection to cut. Top right, uh, over direction. So obviously the hair at the front usually falls forward, grows down. So to create length at the front of the style, he's over directing the hair back to cut it and then it will fall longer in the front. And then uh, bottom left, graduation. So showing that is basically cutting the hair at a 45 degree angle with minimal elevation. So it is not at a zero elevation, it's at a 45. So as you can see in the picture above it, the 45 degree angle out from the head, that's how he's holding the hair and that's how he's cutting it, which is considered graduation. So the hair will be shorter here, longer here. Client consultation for hair cutting. So the most important questions you should uh, consider during your consultation. It's really important to make sure you ask the proper questions because everything that they say um, makes the decision of what you're going to do with their hair. Everything down from the way to shampoo their hair to the way they like it colored, um, the way they like it cut, all of those things um, come down to asking all the right questions during your consultation. Is there anything you'd like to discuss about their hair? Do they have time for maintenance? That meaning um, if you do something that is gonna need to be touched up every four to six weeks, do they have time for that? What is their lifestyle? Do they need to tie their hair up for work? Do they do a lot of exercising where they need to tie their hair back? Um, how much time do they want to spend on their hair every day? Like, do they want to spend 45, half an hour, 45 minutes, blow drying, styling, curling, flat ironing? Or do they want to just put their hair in a clip and go? Um, do they want it to look classic or do they want it to be more on a trendy side? And do they have a budget? Um, you know, a lot of times, depending on what they're willing to spend, dictates um, a lot of what it is that, that you're going to be able to do. Um, you know, people come in with pictures of, you know, these hairdos that are hours of work and money and they want it on a, you know, on a budget of, you know, 50 bucks. Well, that's just not going to happen. So it's really important to discuss budget before you start anything so that everybody's on the same wavelength. The three main things to consider when discussing a haircut or style. Face shape. First and foremost, you've got to take into the account that their face shape. Um, determine the wing, width and length of their face. Pull the hair away from the face and look for the widest and narrowest areas. Uh, the balance of their facial features and their profile. Um, examine the profile. So when you turn the client to the side, look for features that you want to emphasize and those you want to minimize. If they have, you know, um, a large forehead or a large nose, those are things you kind of want to minimize. Weight and volume. Um, it will draw their attention to a specific area uh, to make the area less noticeable, uh, add a reduced weight and volume in other areas of the haircut. Hair analysis. So what are the four characteristics to dis determine the behavior of the hair? Growth patterns, texture, density, and elasticity. Um, again, we've gone over these where, what is texture, what is density, what is elasticity. Um, so the wave pattern, the client may have completely straight hair, wavy, curly, extremely curly. The same haircut will look totally different on every different type of hair. So if they show you a picture of someone with, you know, poker straight hair with, you know, a very trendy, um, like, um, graduated haircut, very sharp lines. Well, someone that has really curly hair, that haircut is not going to look like that on them. And you need to understand that. And they also need to understand that. 
So going back to the face shapes that we went over last week, oval, long, round, square, and heart, um, basically what you're trying to achieve with your hair design is creating the oval face shape. So you're taking um, all these other face shapes and you're you're designing and you're creating around to actually bring the as close as you can to an oval face shape, which is considered the most um, desirable, I guess, face shape to if we want to put it in that regard. Um, so looking at all the different face shapes, it's really important to make sure that you understand the face shape that they're working with um, and be able to do your best at taking those uh, things that they don't like and making it to what they do like. Holding your tools. I don't know how many of you have worked with scissors yet, uh, but it's so important, first of all, to make sure that you have a pair of shears that you like. Um, that fit your hand properly, that are comfortable for your hand. Um, I'm not a big fan of buying scissors sort of just off the cuff. Uh, you need to put them in your hand. You need to feel how they feel in your hand. Are you able to work with them easily? Are they too big? Are they too small? Are they too heavy? Are they too light? All those things make a difference. Are they offset? Are they the same? So many different variables in how to um, have your scissors. So it's really important to understand what works best for you because not there's not one specific style that works for everybody. Um, Left-handed scissors are different than right-handed scissors. So all of that stuff makes a big difference. So in the uh, right-hand corner, opposing grip, offset grip, and crane handle. So these are different uh, handle ways of the scissors at the end where your hands go in. Uh, again, it's all sort of per personal preference or what feels comfortable to you. Remember, you're going to be holding these scissors, you know, depending on your on what you're doing, you know, eight hours, eight to ten hours a day. So they have to be comfortable and your hands have to be comfortable at the end of the day. Um, we don't want to have you don't want to be having like cramping and aching and, you know, all that stuff. So it's important to pick a proper pair of scissors that are comfortable for you. How to hold your shears, um, you know, thumb in the bottom, finger in the top, pinky sits on that little, that little flip out. We'll go over how to hold your scissors and how to palm your scissors. Palming your scissors is so important um, for so many different reasons, but number one is for making sure that nobody gets hurt. If you are cutting, and you don't properly palm your scissors and close the, the, the tip of your scissors, you can cut yourself, you can cut your client, uh, you can actually cut off hair that you weren't expecting to do. So it's really important to be hold your scissors safely. Um, so also that you don't drop them on the floor. You know, your scissors are an investment. We don't want anything hitting the floor because as soon as they hit the floor, that's pretty much a, a you know, a bye-bye to those scissors. If you nick the blade or anything like that, they're basically... Unfortunately, they kind of turn into garbage. Posture and body position. So this business is really hard on the body. No two ways about it. Standing on your feet all day, bending over a sink, bending over your client um, creates a lot of problems uh, as you get older. I can attest to that. Um, issues with my feet, with my knees, with my hips, with my back, with my shoulders, all of it. So it's so important to make sure that your posture and body position are um, proper to keep you from the least amount of injuries as possible. So your lower body position, um, straight with your feet hip width apart, knees should be slightly bent and your weight centered. Shoulders should be relaxed and away from your ears. Stand with the section you are working on directly in front of you. So it's so important that whenever we do anything for multiple reasons, but body posture and position, obviously, is to be working directly in front of you. You don't want to be standing here and working off to the side because then you're kind of jostling everything off to the side. So it's really important to make sure um, that you're standing, first of all, flat on the floor, comfortable shoes, first and foremost. Your upper body position, so your finger angle should mirror your subsection angle. So how you take that subsection, your hands and your fingers should actually mirror that. So 
whatever way the hair comes off the head, your hand has to go in that same direction. And cutting below the finger is used for control when cutting one length below the shoulder or low elevation. So we cut below the finger when we're pulling down. When we're pulling up, we cut above the finger. We never cut underneath when we're holding the hair up. We never cut underneath. We always cut above. I thought this was kind of a funny thing. Um, clients be like, I want something completely different, but I want the, I want to keep the length. Um, again, this is something you'll hear for all the time. Nobody wants to lose their length, but they want to do something different. And I just saw this picture and I was just crying with laughter. I just thought it was so hilarious that somebody actually does this for him and he pays for it. Or maybe he does it himself. I don't know, but I just thought it was very funny. So cut hair using basic haircutting techniques. So the first haircut that we do in this class is your blunt haircut or the one length haircut. Um, all the hair comes to a single hanging level forming a weight line. The weight line is a visual line in the haircut where the ends of the hair hang together. So in a one length style, everything comes to one length. There is no elevation or over direction. The cut is referred to as a zero elevation cut. So if you remember that picture where it showed like the head form, zero elevation is at the very bottom. So we call it cutting at zero elevation. Um, it has a stationary guide, which means everything comes down to one guide. Um, the cutting line can be so horizontal, diagonal, or rounded. Blunt haircuts are excellent for finer and thinner hair types because the hair is cut to one length, making it appear thicker. The uh, second haircut that we do is the long layered. It's not on here yet, but I'll go into the graduated haircut. Um, you'll be use a lot, utilizing uh, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal cutting lines with a 45 degree elevation at the back. Uh, variations of this cut can be created by combining different angles and elevations. Again, the higher you bring the hair off the head, the more of an elevation, the more of a layer. All these things sort of come into, um, they have to all sort of be brought into the idea of how you want this haircut to end. This hair uses a stationary, stationary and a traveling guide. Um, always check your neckline carefully before you cut it too short. Use the fine teeth of the comb to maintain even tension and, and a precision line. So when we're combing out the hair, we use the wider side of the, the comb. But then when we're actually taking our subjection, getting ready to cut it, we turn the comb and use our fine teeth to make sure that the hair is um, pulled tight, no tangles, no bubbles, no pieces that are not quite the same, and we hold a proper tension. So here's some examples. Uh, obviously on the left is the blunt cut, pretty self-explanatory. All the hair brought down to one length, cut off at the bottom, straight line. On the right, this is our graduated cut. So shorter in the back with a 45 degree angle, longer in the front. That's what we mean by that. On the uh, left, we have our long layered haircut. Now our mannequins aren't gonna look exactly like that, but it gives a good visual. And then on the right side is our uniform layered cut. So this is kind of a really good example. Your mannequins won't look exactly like this, but um, it's actually a really good example of a uniform layered haircut where people are always like, why does it kind of look like a mullet? Well, the thing about a uniform layered haircut is that every single piece of hair on the head is the exact same length, but the hair grows differently out of the head. So hairs that are above the ear are the same length as the hairs that are at the bottom, but they'll be different lengths because of the way they grow, the, the, the spot on the head that they grow out of. So that's really important. So you have a haircut assignment that will be due. Um, so what I want you to do is find three pictures of each of the four haircuts. So like I just showed you there, I had a picture of the blunt cut. I had a picture of the graduated cut, a long layered haircut, and a uniform layered haircut. So I want you to find three pictures of all four of those haircuts. So three blunt, three layered, three graduated and three uniform layered cuts. Not off the internet. I don't want you to, you know, Google it and say, show me pictures of a uniform layered haircut. 
obviously then the internet will be doing that work for you. I want to know that you understand what those haircuts look like. So you can take pictures of your own clients. You can use um, pictures of clients you've done in the past from your own portfolio. Um, you can use mannequin heads. You can use, I don't care what it is, cut it out of a magazine, cut it out of a newspaper, cut it out of a flyer, um, anything that you have that have access to actually um, pictures and glue them to pages to hand in next week. Use your creativity. Um, you know, your mark, part of your mark on this will deter be determined on, you know, did you take a piece of, you know, lined paper out of your notebook and stick pe pe pictures on it that were roughly cut out? Mm. You know, I've had ones where they've done like a, a really nice booklet with, you know, colored paper. And I want to see each page, um, the three different cuts of and I want you to, to write on the page that you understand what they are. So that this is a blunt cut, there's three images of a blunt cut, of a long layered haircut, that there's three images of a long layered haircut, graduated and uniform layered. Same thing, if it's possible to get different angles of the haircut so that you can see, you know, front side and back would be optimal. Um, I know that that's not always the way that it works. For some reason, haircut books don't always do that, but as much as possible, try to get it from different angles so that I understand that you understand what these haircuts look like. In your practical workbook, you are to complete questions numbers 1 to 144 for next week. Um, this is a big chapter, but it's also a very important chapter. So it's we need to understand everything in here to um, be able to do you know, haircutting properly. So it's kind of a big chapter. There's a lot in it. Um, so questions one to 144 and your test will also be online. And then next week we actually get to start cutting hair. So it's very exciting. Um, hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you later.